Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal. I'm out here in beautiful Nederland, Colorado, testing an exciting new camper called the Super Tramp. So the thing you notice right off the bat is the angled front end, which helps with clearance on the trail. And then there's this beautiful automotive finish. So you can see the high gloss here in this composite side. Now these are all molded fiberglass components uh, that are all married together. And then they do this really classy vinyl applique here. It's like a matte vinyl, a little bit of a mountain scene. I really do like this gray lineup here. And then you can see on the side, there are these metal panels. These actually come out uh, very easily and that's where you install the jacks if you need to remove the camper. This also has one of the most unique camper attachment systems that we've seen in the industry. It's proprietary to them, self-centering, kind of drops it down in a channel here at the front and then uh, it sits in like a like a high quality Delrin style sleeve and uh, that self centers it and secures the front of the camper and then in the back here you can see these high quality fast gun lashing fasteners here super heavy duty brackets down here at the bottom and then they're pinned in place for safety and security. Get another big bracket here on the back, which also makes up the bracket that's used for this lifting roof mechanism. And it takes just about 10 seconds to lift the roof up. You do want to be careful, make sure you're, you're not clamping down on anything or pushing tree branches up and out of the way. So you always want to make sure you got good clearance, but it goes up and down in a snap. Uh, and because of these bungees around the diameter of the tent it pulls the tent walls in uh, very quickly you don't actually need to do any tucking or pushing of material to get this to close down they make their own molly panels in-house they have a cnc machine that they use for a lot of their other processes and they've got some max tracks here easily carrying a set of four off of the back this is the gray water little locker here so a couple snaps open and you can see the piping in here for the shower tank it does have an inside and an outside shower option um, these valves just come out and easily drain the gray water from the shower one of the things i really like here is underneath the floor a really long drawer so you can fit if you're a hunter you fit a long rifle uh, you can fit long chairs and other items but you can see just exactly how far this comes out and it's made out of carbon fiber itself so very lightweight very rigid um, so it doesn't have a lot of flex as we close it in the back here the rear door is proprietary to super tramp as well they make it in-house they use really high quality windows from turnover land and then they also use this high quality RV lock, which is, it's my favorite lock as well. So it uh, just uses either a key or a key code or even a key fob to get in and out of the camper, which I find is really clever. On this side, we've got another locker and that has the two propane tanks. This actually comes out on a slide easily access the two one thing i think is really clever is the placement so you can leave this one connected all the time uh, to run the truma unit the combi unit it also runs the, the stove top but then you can use this backmost tank uh, to run a barbecue or an outside stove door has a hold open uh, which is pretty rare to see uh, but it's a nice addition super heavy duty piano hinge as well. They do wire a 30 amp circuit into the truck battery 
uh, connects up to a DC to DC charger. So it keeps the camper battery topped off while you're going down the road. This particular unit has Moly panels down the side with a 23-0 outside shower enclosure and a 23-0 uh, bag awning here uh, that you know goes out the whole side of the vehicle. I think it's it's one of their 180 degree awnings. So it gives a lot of coverage. Uh, the downside of this is they do stick out from the camper quite a ways. So you can actually see how far they stick out from the camper. These are soft bagged awnings and they take a lot of abuse on the trail from trees and branches. They can get torn and snagged and, um, and even hung up. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of off-road driving, I think you're better off uh, skipping um, this whole panel. And it's also such a handsome looking camper. Uh, the finish is just so beautiful. It just it feels wrong to put anything on the side of it. And you also save a lot of weight. So you can go with a, a really simple suction cup style awning. There's several of them on the market that are really high quality. Here we have the exhaust for the Truma unit. Uh, the Truna, Truma Combi is actually one of the more clever units on the market. It does a combination of heating the inside of the camper. So it's your heater, air heater, but then it also heats up your water as well. Uh, it's got a very clever and easy intuitive interface, but this is where it exhausts out the uh, combustion process from the propane. And then we've got our power in here. And, and that's actually the power in for the Truma unit. So if you wanted to heat water, for example, um, in a campground, you can do that electrically. And then we have the NOCO unit. Now this simple plug it in to a wall outlet and it tops off uh, the Battleborn battery that's on board. Here's your water fill, 24 gallons on board. And you can see the underside here is all coated in like a rhino lining. Uh, so really good chip protection rock chip protection, tree branch protection, things like that. It extends all the way up underside the camper as well. And it also protects the camper when you're taking it on and off. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about on the outside is really this mounting system. This mounting system is so effective, it keeps the camper just off of this back rail of the bed here. Many, OEM vehicle beds are not are simply not strong enough to take a camper pressed up against this forward rail. So this self-centering system that bears all the weight of the camper, it keeps the camper completely off of this this uh, this forward bulkhead of the bed and protects it from being damaged or crumpled in or or even pushed up into the cab. So this is a, a really important consideration and something that a lot of camper manufacturers struggle with. So here we have the Super Tramp camper and we are at the Caribou Ranch where they record, where Super Tramp recorded many of their songs. Of course, there's a gated entry, which I understand, but parked right in front of it and tie a little bit of history into this brand new and very exciting camper that's on the market. All right, so now we're gonna go through the inside of the Super Tramp camper. You can see the two of the lifting struts. These are the forward lifting struts. The rear ones are outside the vehicle. <clears throat> What's really clever about this camper though, is it has massive storage up underneath. So this is all molded fiberglass and composite, has lifting struts that help you move it up. And that ends up being everything that you need for wardrobe storage in the whole vehicle for that matter. And it pulls down with a couple straps. And it looks to me, um, you know, like a queen size bed, maybe a little bit smaller, but fairly close in size. And Tonight, I'm just going to use a little plug out to Aeronaut, a small company. They're not a sponsor or advertiser, but they're making these really cool down blankets and just good to support people doing that. The Super Tramp Camper also has two fans, which is really unusual. 
in a soft-sided camper with this much uh, window space but you can get a ton of airflow through here with that so you can have the forward fan pushing air out and then the rear fan pulling air in or the other way around so you can have a draft going across your body while you're sleeping bunch of aerospace lashing track here as well throughout the camper this really convenient bungee net you can stick drying towels and other blankets and jackets and things like that a bunch of lighting is integrated here into the molded roof so this is a just a really strong and, and beautifully done molded roof all right you can see this back door how it nests into the fiberglass body nests nicely uh, they got a, just a simple little trash bag hanging here heavy duty door striker you can see that and then they use the turn overland windows so it's got a privacy shade that comes down which is really nice if you want to keep things dark in here and then they've also got a bug screen so if you want to open up this window and get a bunch of airflow through and interestingly enough this is the only solid window in the entire camper because it's a soft-sided camper so it actually has a three-part window here so this is the mesh and the mesh will open up all the way if you want to uh, get this completely open i mean look at that view out there that's what colorado is all about um, and then it has a clear window here so if it's cold but you want to see outside um, you want to retain a little bit of of uh, temperature on the inside or res restrict the amount of of breeze coming through and then this is the heavy duty insulated layer as well and that would also be your blackout curtain so that would keep things nice and dark in here so they got the rear window they have a massive side window they have the forward wraparound window uh, the wraparound window does not have plastic uh, windows available for it which i think actually makes a lot of sense because that's your sleeping area so you're going to want that to be a little darker anyway so you can either have the mesh for maximum ventilation or you can zip up the blackout curtain so it's a little bit darker in there when you're trying to sleep in in the morning hopefully and then you got your last window here on this side and also the last little bits of the sun coming through before it sets all right so let's actually take a look and see what's underneath uh, some of these dinette cushions here a heavy duty panel which of course is intended to support weight when you're getting up to the top this is the kitchen table you can see the go power 1500 watt inverter there it's a little bit of a storage bag here for basic sundries and then underneath the table and underneath this little um, protective cover is the 25 gallon 24 gallon water tank so here you can see the table in position and it moves around easily so you can kind of work in any position or eat in any position i think two people could easily eat at it it is a little bit of a smaller table but personally i don't think it needs to be much bigger than that it would easily work for two people even if two people needed to work Okay, so it can't be understated how much inside seating space there is in this. I mean, someone could be lounging there full width, reading a book. Another person could easily be lounging in this other side. You could sleep two people inside as well. Uh, this would easily allow for someone well over six feet to, to sleep on the length of it. Inside this cabinet, is the porta potty and porta potties are nice to have there's times we get sick and it's also uh, our responsibility to make sure that we're packing out as much as we can as much as possible so if you can use a porta potty when you're camping uh, please do so uh, this has the provision for that you can easy, easily also use a composting toilet in here um, once the porta potty comes out this actually becomes the shower basin and we'll set that up here in a little bit 
So the Super Tramp inside shower system is actually super clever. Just pop this cushion out of the way. This panel comes up and then rests back against the side wall. You can see the drain here uh, and it does drain into a gray water tank. You can get a couple showers in. They have this branded bag here that includes a, a waterproof, quick drying, antimicrobial uh, shower curtain. Um, I'm gonna set that up. Okay, we can see here the shower curtain's all set up. Uh, they put the zipper towards the front. They make all this in-house as well. Just clips up to these really convenient little carabiners here. And then the shower curtain goes down and funnels into the basin. And where you really need the space is not so much where you're standing, but you need the space around your shoulders. You can see there's quite a bit of room in here. Um, I can easily stand in this space. The shower faucet here, hand control. And it's one of those ones that pop up as well so that it goes on, you know, full pressure or you can hold it down uh, for momentary. And it's controlled right here from the sink. So right underneath the sink, there is a separate temperature and on control here and you can see where the hose the reinforced hose goes up and into the shower so when you're standing inside the shower here you can easily activate the shower or go into a full full-on position as well and it'll just keep running and then it all collects down into that basin all right so we're going to talk about soft-sided campers they have a ton of advantages. The biggest advantage that they have is that the, the overall height is much lower. Uh, if you wanna go and pick someone up at the Denver airport, nine foot six. And if you got a hard sided camper, you're gonna be over that, ask me how I know. Uh, so it is nice having a lower camper, uh, getting through drive-throughs, getting through airports. So um, it is nice to be able to lower that down. You also get up, end up with a lot more clearance on the trail as well. Um, so you're gonna have less issues getting into some of these backcountry spots, uh, which is a great example of like what happened tonight. I was able to get back in on a, on a high clearance four wheel drive trail that had fairly low branches uh, and the camper had no issue getting to this absolutely beautiful spot uh, next to an old mine. But there are times when you don't wanna be advertising that you're camping. So one of the things that I look for and I expect in a soft sided camper is that you can sleep inside of it uh, with the top down. Um, there's also times um, when you're concerned about security and you need the top down. And there's also times when the weather can be so extreme and there can be so much wind, the wind can be so extreme that you really need to be able to drop the top on this thing uh, to protect it um, and protect the occupants of the vehicle. So I'll show you here. We're going to go ahead and lower down the top. And I'm just sitting here at the dinette and it's closing in on me here. If you notice, I haven't changed my seating position at all. Now the, got just a couple inches here. So if you were a taller person than 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 um, you, might, you might get uh, into a tight spot and then you can easily lay down. So there is tons of room here where you could just grab this pillow and then you're easily laying down. I'm stretched out completely from end to end. And again, I've got a little bit of headroom behind me still. So if you had another person with you, they would need to sleep um, kind of on the east west configuration. You'd have to be a little bit mindful of not kicking each other. But I do think that it's very possible to sleep two people in this camper as long as they weren't both. 6162 but being able to be inside a camper like this is absolutely key when the storm is brewing and ripping or when you're concerned about security or you do not want to advertise that you're camping and there's many places and there's many times when you just need to make a place to sleep and you don't want to advertise that you're camped for the night so being able to lower the top and still function completely inside the camper i can access all of the systems, including the sink, um, it would be a little more difficult uh, to cook 
in this configuration, but it would be possible to do that as well. So nice job, Super Tramp, on making sure that the camper is functional, even with the top down. And you can see these lights come on just with the flick of a button. It seems like they give plenty of lighting. You've also got a smoke detector up here at the top. Now if I move down a little bit, this is the kitchen area. So we have a Dometic two burner. That's all you need in a camper this size. Nice size sink as well. Uh, this does swing down, although you don't need to to close the camper. Uh, there are campers out there that you've got to do all kinds of stowage to keep things from getting bent and damaged uh, and then this all goes into the gray water tank this cover also comes down quite easily actually tucked it in behind the, the window but then you've got a little bit larger work surface beautiful bamboo countertop i can just have my map out here Behind the galley, uh, we've got a little bit of hanging storage. This is all just my personal kit that I've got with me in the camper here. But most of the electronics that you need access to are done here on the other side of the galley. So this is the return vent for the Truma Combi unit. This is the Truma Combi control panel here. So you could turn on the heater, turn on the hot water, if you're plugged into shore power, you can heat using shore power. And then this is gonna be your fan speed. Then there's a couple other settings. Uh, they got full-time power to a 12 volt outlet here. And then they've got two USB outlets powered here. Then you've got two 120 outlets, a really classy, simple, round socket. I really kind of like it. There's a couple USB sockets underneath there as well that are powered once you turn on the inverter. And this uses a go power inverter and that just flips on with the power switch there. Here is your positive heat vent here. So this is your, your blower output um, that's going to be positioned up towards your bed. And then there's another blower output right here that would keep the back part of the camper also nice and cozy. This is a drawer that slides out. They were kind enough to leave me plenty of utensils and things to cook with. These are high quality latches and they don't tend to pop open when underway. That can be a problem with many of the different latches on the market. You've got your carbon monoxide tester here, which those always need to be down a little bit low because of where carbon monoxide tends to settle. And then this gives you access to the Truma Combi unit. You can see the Battleborn battery here, 200 amp hours. And then we've got access to your fuse block. You've got your main disconnect as well. You can see the NOCO, that's your, gonna be your 120 volt inlet. So that'll, that'll charge the battery uh, when, you're, when you have the camper stored, for example. So on their version two camper, they've added a water level gauge and they've also got the Victron battery gauge as well. So it, it shows what the current battery level is. And a nice little placard here. You just look at this galley, you can see how simple it is and how they have recessed all of these items here. So the, these doors all recess inside this really small molded channel here. And then it's all CNC finished. So the finish on everything is just really beautiful. This is a typical marine style isotherm. So good quality isotherm. Small freezer if you want to keep some ice cream. So I got a little bit of food here um, that I picked up in the grocery store and I'm ready for a couple days of camping. 
And then this last cabinet here on the right. It's a little bit of storage for pots and pans. This is your shower hose here in the top. And then I stuffed in a little bit of dry goods food here. Also all finished in this beautiful bamboo. I think it just really adds just a bit of that natural warmth to the camper. Uh, the camper is intentionally austere, which I like. I like the fact that it's so simple. Um, it's a very elegant camper, but it is nice to have some of those natural fibers here. This lifts and lowers the top. This is gonna be turning on your water pump for showering or for running the sink. This is the lights and the interior, so turn those on and off. All right, so let's run through the pros and cons on this camper. The first thing that comes to mind for me immediately is just the quality of the overall construction of the camper, uh, the quality of the finish on the outside of the camper, and the, the quality of the materials and equipment that was fitted to the inside of the unit. I also really like the fact that the unit is so spacious inside. It's only six and a half feet long um, for a six and a half foot bed. Uh, but it just feels massive on the inside. So they've taken full advantage of that space uh, by not packing it too full of stuff. So it actually feels really roomy, spacious, relaxing. I also like the fact that the camper has all the amenities that you really need, including a place to have a porta potty, uh, which is just so important nowadays with so many people out camping, we've got to pack that stuff out. Uh, and then it's also got a way to take an inside and an outside shower. All right, now let's talk about the things that, uh, some suggestions or things that I'd like to see a little bit different. The one thing that comes to mind for me uh, right away is, is the size of the zippers um, on the windows. Uh, I just don't see them lasting long-term. Um, just in working with them yesterday, I had to be extremely gentle, especially around the radius, um, to get those things to close without the zippers catching um, or being uh, requiring too much pressure to get them to close. So the average consumer is just not gonna be that delicate, uh, and I don't see those zippers holding up to those conditions. Easy thing for them to change. Um, I also would not spec it with any of the moly panels down the side of the camper. The reality is this is already a full-size camper on a full-size truck and it's full width too. They take full advantage of the width uh, to give you all that interior space. So to bolt anything on the side uh, at all doesn't make any sense to me. So I wouldn't spec it with any of the moly panels. Uh, it's an option, fortunately. Um, the rear moly panel is great. Um, and then you can just use a suction cup style uh, awning, a uh, bag style awning on the side. Um, Cause they just, they're gonna get ripped up. Uh, those on those bag awnings just aren't gonna survive any real trail use. If you don't plan to use the camper uh, for anything but dirt roads, it's probably okay uh, on that. And then we did have a little bit of an issue. We had a power issue with the camper. Um, I do not believe that it's an issue with anything that Super Tramp has done. I don't believe it's an engineering problem. I think it's a reflection of the fact that they were just at the Overland Expo for many days, putting up and taking down the top, uh, which takes quite a bit of power. And we also had very little sun. Uh, so they would have only had an hour of drive time. So I just suspect that the batteries were too low. And then I only had a an hour of drive time here. Um, so we just haven't had enough sun, haven't had enough power um, to run the inverter. So I was getting an inverter fault and then uh, about one o'clock in the morning, um, all of the power shut off in the unit, uh, which is of course a concern when you've got um, electric rams that lower the top. So fortunately, when I started the truck up this morning, I was able to lower down the top and get back on the road. But a uh, minor power issue that just, it's important for us to disclose, but we don't think it's an issue with the camper. We think it's probably a byproduct of its recent use. 